Hello and welcome back to the channel everybody. I am your host Vortex from MobileMusicPro.com, your home for mobile music production. And if you are new to the channel, what we do here is release weekly videos teaching people how to produce music on their iOS device. And in today's video, we're going to be breaking down sample rates and latency so that you can better optimize your settings inside Cubasis 3 right after this. And remember folks, if you do enjoy content like this, make sure to like, subscribe, and share out the show. Now let's go ahead and start out by defining some of these terms. The first one is latency. Latency is simply the amount of time that it takes the signal to go from your preamp through to your audio interface, and then inside your computer, and then into your DAW, and then back again throughout to your audio interface, and then finally to your speakers. Now there are several ways to solve various latency issues, such as using audio interfaces with onboard and built-in FX so that you don't have to use the CPU inside of your computer computer, or in some cases using direct monitoring, or even modifying some of your settings inside of your DAW. And today, we're going to be focused on that last one. Alright, now the second term that we have to define here is sample rates. Now the sample rate simply determines how many samples that your audio interface will capture every second. Some of these typical sample rates are things like 44.1 kilohertz, or 48 kilohertz, or even 96 kilohertz. Now before we start throwing out too high of sample rates here, it is important to mention that the higher the sample rate isn't necessarily always better. So stick around to find out why that is. All right, now before we go any further, we did want to mention that if you did want to go more in depth and learn more about this stuff like sample rates and latency, we do recommend the YouTube channel White Sea Studios. And we'll definitely make sure to put a link to that YouTube channel in the description below. And also please be aware that the optimal latency and sample rate settings may differ depending on your situation. For example, they might be different when you're recording or different when you're live on stage versus when you're doing your productions. And today we're going to be focused on getting just the optimal settings for music production. Okay, now the first thing that I want to do here is show you some of these settings or some of these terms in real world products so that you can see that it's not all just mumbo jumbo. These terms can absolutely be important in determining the type of audio hardware that you purchase. So what we have pulled up here is a focus right website here. This is the Focusrite Scarlet 2i2. This is the interface that we use here at the studio. And this is the second generation of the audio interface where the third one, I believe, is the latest one that is out currently. But just a couple terms I want to zero in here on. And the first, of course, is sample rate. As you can see right here, we can zoom this in a little bit. And right here, you can see that this particular audio interface is capable of 96 kilohertz at the max for a sample rate. Now, this is, of course, not uncommon. There are many audio interfaces that only go up to 48 or 96 kilohertz. But nowadays, there are more audio interfaces that are going all the way up to 192. But for most iOS producers, we're not going to be producing in sample rates that high, not even close. And in just a little bit, we'll get into why the higher sample rates don't necessarily always mean better. And the next term I want to take a look at here is the audio modes. As you can see here, the audio mode has a playback of 24 bit. And again, we'll get into the explanation of some of these terms in just a bit here. But just notice that this right here does say 24 bit audio at 9600 kilohertz. These two terms here, like the bit rate and the sample rate, are something that you are going to need to pay attention to from your hardware all the way through to your DAW. Okay, now let's go ahead and take a look inside of Cubasis 3 and take a look at some of these all important settings. So what we're going to do is tap on the setup icon in the top right hand corner and then we're going to go down to our project settings here on the left hand side. And what we're going to focus on today is these two important settings here which is the sample rate here on the left hand side and the bit resolution on the right hand side. Now as we said the sample rate is an important bit of information to know because you are going to need to know for your hardware like your audio interface and your ADDA converter which is your analog to digital and digital to analog converter, as well as your project settings like we're looking at here and even inside some of your plugins. But today again, we're only going to be focused on the project settings here inside Cubasis 3. Now, as you can see, we have our project settings set to a sample rate of 44.1 kilohertz and a bit resolution of 16 bit. Now, it's important to note here that the higher the sample rates and the higher the bit resolution, the higher the CPU is going to have to work on your iPad. Now, as you just saw on that website, our Focusrite 2i2 is capable of a higher sample rate and higher bit resolution resolutions, with ours maxing out at 96 kilohertz for the sample rate and 24 bit for the bit resolution. And again, that's because going too high on your sample rate or too high on your bit resolution is going to result in higher loads for your CPU, which could of course result in crackling and latency. 
Now, generally speaking, you usually can't hear the difference between higher sample rates and higher bit resolutions. In fact, YouTube will automatically compress this video down to 44.1. And 44.1 kilohertz is the standard sample rate for things like CDs. So we essentially call 44.1 CD quality. So it's obviously pretty good, and in fact, it's usually the sample rate that most of your clients will demand your projects end up in. Now, the iPad is fast, don't get me wrong, but it is a little bit slower than laptops still. So we definitely recommend that for iPhones and iPads, generally speaking, if you are just doing standard music production, we definitely recommend that you stay at around 44.1 for the sample rate and around 16 for the bit depth. Again, you can go higher, but in general, you can't really tell the difference, and you're just going to work your iPad or iPhone that much harder. And it's also important to note that if you guys are new to this stuff, just so you guys are aware, you actually actually only are recording at half your sample rate. So if you do have your project set to 44.1 here, you're actually only recording at about 22. And the reason for that is because recording at about half of the sample rate is the maximum level that you can actually accurately monitor and process the incoming signal. Okay, now on to bit resolution. Now in general, computers like to work on large bits of information every once in a while, as opposed to working with little bits of information streaming constantly. So the bit resolution determines how large those amounts are or the number of bits of information in each sample. Some examples that we we mentioned before are audio CDs, which have a sample rate of 44.1 kilohertz and a bit resolution of 16 bit. Another example is DVDs or Blu-rays, which can go all the way up to 24 bit resolution. But as we said, using those higher sample rates and higher bit rates doesn't always equate to better quality audio. It all depends on how the audio was actually recorded and then produced inside the DAW. All right, next up, let's go ahead and go into the audio settings here. So once again, we are in the setup options here to get here. All you have to do is tap on the setup icon in the top right hand corner and then tap on the audio tab on the left hand side. Now the two main settings that we're going to be focused on on this page here is the device latency and the audio engine latency. So let's first talk about the device latency here. Now the latency value here determines your device's audio buffer length in milliseconds. And in fact, Cubasis will display your audio interface's default device latency right here. Again, we are running the Scarlet 2i2 and you can see that it has a delay of 2.6 milliseconds. So that is the device latency that this Scarlet is capable of is 2.6 milliseconds. Now, as you can see here, we don't have it set on 2.6 or 2.9. We have it set on 5.8. And this again, just like our settings in the project page are set this way so that we can utilize the most amount of CPU possible because lowering the device latency to anything below 5.8 will cause the CPU to require more resources. And again, we are just running on these iOS devices here, the iPhones and iPads. So I want to find some kind of good balance between CPU usage and a latency that I'm comfortable with so that I don't hear any delay or audio artifacts inside my headphones and speakers. So again, just because our device is capable of 2.6 doesn't mean that I actually want to run at 2.9. For both my iPhone and iPad, I definitely mostly keep this at 5.8. So just like with our project settings here, if you have too high of a sample rate or if you have too high of a bit resolution, you are going to experience artifacts like delays, latency, and a bunch of crackling. So if you are experiencing crackling, some of the first things you want to do is check out your sample rate, bit resolution, and then now in your audio settings, you want to check out your device latency. All right, moving on to the next setting here, which is the audio engine latency. Now you'll notice a message here that says multi-core rendering is disabled. And that is because we currently have our audio engine latency setting turned off. Now this setting was just recently added inside of Cubasis 3.2. This multi-core rendering was set up so that if you have large projects with lots of plugins, Cubasis will be able to utilize multiple processors simultaneously. So again, what this means is that on devices with more than two high performance CPU cores, the rendering of multiple tracks during playback and mixdown is simultaneously performed on multiple cores here. However, as with anything, there is a caveat. What we've found from our experience is that disabling this option for smaller projects is the most optimal way to go. Because, somewhat ironically, using this audio engine latency setting that is taking advantage of multiple CPUs actually does require more processing power. So you really only want to utilize this and let this thing loose on very large projects. So something like projects that are larger than 10 or 20 tracks and have a lot of plugins on them. When Cubasis 3 first came out, when we moved some of our older, larger projects from Cubasis 2 over to Cubasis 3, we definitely noticed a lot of latency and crackling. But ever since 3.2 came out with this new multi-core rendering technology, those projects no longer crackle, which is of course super awesome. But then we noticed that some of our smaller projects were starting to crackle with only a few tracks on them. And so after browsing and perusing through some of the Steinberg forums about Cubasis 3, we did notice that Lars posted a message about the audio engine latency that pretty much summarizes what we're telling you here. So to recap on smaller projects with less than 20 tracks, you definitely want to keep this disabled. But if you are working with larger projects with more than 20 tracks or just a ton of plugins, then definitely start experimenting with this audio engine latency setting. But again, remember that just like the device latency, the lower the MS, the more your CPU has to work. 
And that is pretty much all there is to it. Just don't forget, folks, that the iPad is getting faster all the time. In fact, the speeds for both the iPhone and iPad have been doubling about every single year. And we certainly will be expecting great things from Apple when it comes to their latest A14X processor. We hope that that chip will indeed be M1 comparable or close to the M1 chip speeds and be available as early as this year. All right, folks, if you are still rocking with us, then we can't thank you enough for being here. And we especially can't thank the people enough that are here every Wednesday and Friday to watch our live streams and live premieres. Now, we do hope that this video helped you better understand the sample rate and latency settings inside Cubasis 3. And we do hope that we've given you some insight here so that you can prevent any type of crackling or audio latency issues in your setup. But as always, if you do have any questions, definitely make sure to leave them down in the comments below or hit us up on any one of our socials. And don't forget, guys, we are still doing our weekly clubhouse meetups every single Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We talked about NFTs, Bitcoin, and crypto during our last conversation, so definitely make sure that you join us this Thursday for our next conversation, where we'll be talking about how producers can make money online. Now, you can actually join the conversation yourself with audio only using the Clubhouse app, but we'll also be streaming the conversation live on our YouTube channel, so you can definitely hit us up in the chat over there. And also this week, we did announce the April Cubasis 3 winner. For those that have been following along, we've been having a giveaway for Cubasis 3 every single month and we will have them every single month until June. So we're super stoked to see this person win a copy of Steinberg's flagship DAW so that they can now really kick their iOS music production career into high gear. Now if you didn't yet win a copy of Cubasis 3, we are doing another giveaway for this month as well. And we'll be releasing all the details about that next week, so stay tuned. And of course, we always have a ton more content coming your way, so if you do want to keep up with everything that we're doing here from sample packs to giveaways to contests and more, definitely subscribe to our free mailing list at Mobile Music pro.com and so until next time everybody keep talking music and we'll see you later